Hi guys, it's Kristen from Kristen Food Science. I'm here to share with you one of my favorite online simulations for teaching chemistry. Um, the, the simulation I'm going to show you today does a really good job at taking a concept that's pretty abstract and helping students to visualize it. Um, and it doesn't cost a thing. So this one is put out by the American Association for Chemistry Teachers. You can find the link right here. And while there are many simulations on this page, all of them don't cost a thing. This is the one I want to share with you, the ionic and covalent bonding. Um, so this exercise will really help students to understand why two elements come together to form an ionic compound, whereas two other elements come together to form a covalent compound. And it all takes place using this interactive periodic table. So the first thing that your student needs to do is pick two elements. Um, so I'm gonna just pick for, I'm gonna pick sodium. And when your student picks the first element, the Lewis structure uh, or the electron dot, dot structure for that element shows up. And of course, by this time, your students already understand about electrons and where they live in an atom. They understand about valence electrons, and they have learned how to use Lewis dot structures to depict the valence electrons. So sodium being in that first group of the periodic table has one valence electron. There it is. And it also, this will tell you that it's a metal. So over here, I'm going to pick chlorine. Predictable, huh? Okay, so chlorine, I'm going back up here. Chlorine is a non-metal. So your students probably should have learned by now that when a metal and a non-metal form a bond, it's going to be ionic. But this helps them actually visualize why that is. Okay, so as we said, sodium had one valence electron. Chlorine in, in its group, it, all of the elements in its group of the periodic table have seven valence electrons. And your students at this point are likely familiar with the octet rule, the fact that all elements are reacting with one another in order to gain that full outer shell of electrons and to satisfy the octet rule. Well, it's kind of easy to see here, isn't it? That sodium has one valence electron, it wants eight. It's gonna be much more easy for sodium to give up its one valence electron than it is to steal seven valence electrons from somebody else. Whereas chlorine, it's got seven valence electrons, it wants eight, it's so close to meeting the octet rule and all it needs is to steal a valence electron from something else, something say like sodium that wants to get rid of its one valence electron. So for multiple reasons, either because your student can see the Lewis structure and see how easily this one valence electron could fit over there for chlorine, or the fact that they know that metals and non-metals like to form covalent bonds, they come down here. Oh, where was my question? Oh, here it is. What type of bond is this combination likely to form? We just said ionic. And then the second thing is, based on your knowledge of each of these atoms, predict the number of each atom needed. Well, um, I guess I can scroll back up here. We can see that with if one atom of sodium gives up its single valence electron to one atom of chlorine, it will develop a net positive one charge. Chlorine will pick up a net negative one charge and those charges will be attracted to each other and they will balance each other out. So it's only going to take one sodium and one chlorine to form an ionic bond and you you hit submit answer and then it shows you how it's done it shows you um you know the, the two ions that are formed the sodium ion and the chlorine ion just like that it's beautiful and makes the compound sodium chloride and that's what it looks like so let's do another one all right, let me see, how do I do another one? I guess I just go back up here. Okay, so go up here. All right, so this time let me do um, nitrogen. I clicked on nitrogen. It is a non-metal and here is, it's got five valence electrons and that's what it looks like, it's Lewis dot structure. And let me choose, um, I'll choose, actually I'm gonna choose another nitrogen, okay? So I'm going back up here. So you see that nitrogen is a nonmetal. And so we've got two nonmetals that are going to form a bond. 
And hopefully by now your students know that when two nonmetals form a bond, it is a covalent bond. Instead of any stealing and accepting of, um, of valence electrons, as is the case with ionic bonds, in a covalent bond, they're going to share the electrons. Um, and you see that they each, each, uh, each nitrogen has five valence electrons. They want eight. So what are they going to do? They are going to share the valence electrons with the other nitrogen. So I'm going to say it's going to form a covalent bond. We're going to use one nitrogen binding with one nitrogen. Submit my answer. And that was the right thing. And so it's going to do this and it's actually going to form a triple bond between the two nitrogen um, atoms. And it's even telling you what the geometry is going to be. So that's pretty cool. Let's do one more covalent. So this time I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose nitrogen. Oh, it's okay. And chlorine. Sure. Let's try that. I'm going to say it's going to be a covalent bond. And I'm going to say I need, because I can see that uh, chlorine has one valence electron to share, whereas nitrogen has three, I'm going to say it's going to take one nitrogen and three chlorines to form this, this compound. So one nitrogen, three chlorines, submit answer. I was right, and this is what it looks like. So you've got nitrogen as the central atom, and it's got uh, single bonds to three different chlorines, and it even tells you what the molecular geometry is. It's trigonal pyramidal. So really cool. So once again, this is a great um, online simulation that your kids can use um, in class to just further their understanding, to predict what kind of um, bonds are going to form between different elements of the periodic table and why, and then they get to see it. They get to see for themselves what's happening when these two compound or these two uh, these two atoms come together to form a compound. So uh, I hope you like it.